Welcome back to Taste for Adventure. Aaron, are you ready? Yeah, I, uh, I got some new coasters for us. We got some, yeah. uh, you know... Some little... nice uh, Arbor, Arbor Day Foundation? Arbor Day, right. yeah. You know, for a nonprofit uh, <laughs> okay. that's dedicated to saving the trees, they sure print a lot of shit and send it to Oh, them. okay, yeah, All right. yeah that so makes sense. the latest thing they sent me, because, you know, I, I pay for the Arbor Day Foundation mm -hmm. stuff, but the latest thing they sent me were these beer coasters. Okay. So I thought... Uh, like little pop-out beer coasters. Little pop-out beer coasters. Little, like animals on one side. I thought there was yeah. like a, some nature scenery. Got foxes and some scenery some here. Like, so. uh, this looks like um, something out of like a, a kid's illustrated Bible. <laughs> <laughs> or like a, like a Bob Ross painting. What I like about the uh, the owl one is it almost looks exactly like the Bell's uh, brown ale like bottle cap. Ooh, okay. Because they have like an owl yeah, bottle yeah. cap. But. Right. Uh, anyway, so that was just kind of a goofy thing. Yeah, sure. But, uh, you know. It has nothing to do with what we're talking about on this one. No, it sure doesn't. But, you know, <laughs> um, I also busted these out because it's so hard to find imported beer and beer swag mm -hmm. from certain areas. Okay. That would be, uh, I, in this particular instance, <laughs> British beers we're talking about. So That's England. Right. Yeah. So Not a lot um, of stuff coming out of England. You know, I, I used to see a lot more British beers on the shelves, mm -hmm. but uh, I think with the rise of hoppy bitter beers yeah. and just so many local U.S. crafts uh, being available now, a lot of um, bars and liquor stores aren't really stocking okay. the English imports like they used to. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, which is unfortunate because I personally love a ton of English beers. Okay. So I uh, did some digging, scrounged up some true imported examples, and I thought we could try uh, three different British beer styles. I like it. Yeah. Well, we've got uh, we've got Bass, we've got Hobgoblin, and we've got Old Suffolk. So, uh, you want to get into Bass first? Yeah, let's do Bass. All right. So we've got bass here. Yeah, so uh, the label calls bass a uh, pale ale. Mm -hmm. It says that it's the English. world's first. That's what, that's what it that says. It says the world's first pale ale. Yes, now um, in the BJCP, this is actually style 11C, which is a strong bitter. Okay. Um, but, you know, they can market it any way they want. They market it as a, as a pale ale. Um, there is no English pale ale right now in the BJCP, um, but it kind of occupies that category where it's sure. not quite amber, but getting pretty darn close, um, and it should be um, uh, typical with bitters is it's going to have a lot of malt character, okay. kind of biscuity, and a little bit of caramel. Um, the hops won't present themselves in the nose, but it should be bitter and crisp on the back end. Okay. So uh, this is also crystal clear. It sure is. It does have a little bit of bitterness, but it's like a weird, like, maltier bitterness. Yeah, like it's definitely more malty. That's a, that's definitely a characteristic of the best bitters, where it's malty. Mm -hmm. um, you might get some um, some pear or apple notes, and that's actually from the yeast. Mm -hmm. um, English yeast is often um, kind of estery, yeah, and that's where you're getting that those fruit notes in it, and then it finishes like fairly firmly bitter. Yeah, I, I would agree with that appraisal entirely. It's a nice beer, though. I like it a lot. Actually, my um, flagship beer that I brew for my home brewery, um, Port Griffin Ale, oh, Port is the, in the same style. Yeah. And um, the reason why I chose this style as my flagship is because it's a beer that really um, it has a great flavor. You can you can sip it. You know by itself oh yeah it also really goes well with a lot of food yeah i um, can see that too yeah. yeah pairs well with anything from like you know burgers to even like lighter things uh and the other thing that i really like about it is that it really works in about any season you know mm -hmm. um it it works as like you know it's light enough it's only about four and a half percent alcohol that you can have it in the summer you know yeah. you can have a few on the yeah. on the patio um Especially if you're not really into like hoppy beers or fruity beers, it's a great like summer barbecue type of beer. 
Um, but then it's also like robust and malty enough that it it, it tastes pretty good in the winter. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, maybe coming in from uh, shoveling the snow and you don't want to pound a, a big stout. This this type of thing works really well. That's nice. So very nice. Um, I think this is a very accessible drink. Yeah. Um, so yeah, really, it's a, the the English bitters and especially the strong bitter, I think, really work all year round. And uh, I think it's a very versatile beer. Mm -hmm. And I really wish we could get more traditional examples of these. They're just they're not really important. No, yeah, and I mean, like, is there any specific reason why you don't really see English, you see English beers a lot? Or is it just kind of, you think they're just kind of, the market's moving away? Well, I haven't really talked to any distributors, but, you know, I have some, some guesses, and, and I think it's just because there are so many English or American craft breweries popping up, and it's a lot easier to go to the, you know, new craft brewery around the corner than to import some of these. Um, and also, you know... Customer trends, uh, customers seem to like, you know, rotating lineups. They like to have different uh, things on tap every yeah. week, oh, different yeah. different things every weekend. Definitely. You know, with beer releases and things. And also, you know, the styles are tending to be either more bitter or more like sweet, almost like candy-like mm -hmm. or sour and fruity. Yes. Um, yes. And these traditional beers... Um, you know, there's just not as much consumer demand, yeah. and there's just so much more local competition. Right. So, so is that something you'd say is a key, maybe a key difference between English beers and American beers? I mean, like, I'm, I'm not super, you know, into the whole English beer scene, but, I mean, the, the flavors you mentioned for American beers are just really bombastic. You yeah. know, you've got your milkshake IPAs, <laughs> you know, your hazies, your... I mean, we went to a Viking Artisan Ales not long ago, and it was some of the craziest beer I've ever had. Yeah, you know, very sour, very fruity. Very, yeah. So, um, so typically, um, you know, there's a lot of styles that in the BJCP. There's a British version and an American version. Okay. Pale ales, porters, stouts, all kinds of different things like that. And typically, if there's a style that is made both in the UK and in America, you know, kind of comparing apples to apples here, um, British beers tend to be. Uh, lower in strength okay. they tend to they tend to come across sweeter uh, and not artificially sweet like with lactose right. but because of the malts they use um, and then they are also like the yeast um, is has that like ester characteristic it's more yeah. of like a characteristic uh, flavorful um, characterful uh, English mm -hmm. yeast um, because they produce more esters than um, Especially some like the older uh, American ales, which were really made to, to ferment really dry and be really clean. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So um, another thing I was thinking about that maybe a reason why there aren't as many English imports is there's no like English beer drinking holiday. You know, St. Paddy's Day, you get the Guinness, you get the Smittix, you get, yeah. you know, those. Um, but it's Irish. That's Irish, right? And so you you still see those classic Irish beers. Yeah. Um, Oktoberfest. Everybody knows Oktoberfest, mm -hmm. and so you can get the Polliner, you can yeah. get the Hacker Shore, and and all those. That covers your German. That's right. But you don't really have an English beer drinking holiday. That's what I can think of. So. Yeah. Um, if you're know. English and watching this, and you do have a beer drinking holiday, drop us a line. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we should start celebrating like the Queen's birthday yeah, or Saint something. Yeah, Swiven's day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Find a reason to drink English beers and tell all your friends because we need more real English yeah. beers here. Well, and I don't know. I, I, I once heard um, kind of uh, an interesting thing. Um, it was it was comparing uh, American horror to like you know European horror. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. um, how America is scary because it's so big, and Europe is scary because it's so old. It's, it's almost like, oh, um, you know, England's been around for so long. Maybe they didn't really need to find excuses to drink, you know. I mean, America hasn't been around for as long. Sure. You know, I mean, people drink at the drop of a hat over here. <laughs> the Halloween, the 4th of July, yeah. Arbor Day. Yeah. Why not? Sure. So that's maybe, maybe a little uh, kind of a silly comparison, but there you go. I like that, though. No? I mean, it's... Kind of true. Yeah. yeah kind of, definitely kind of true. Um, 
Speaking of kind of spooky things, we got Hobgoblin up next. Didn't yes. even for that weird transition to happen. <laughs> okay. Got your uh, Hobgoblin guy. Yeah, so uh, Hobgoblin yeah. makes one of the coolest tap handles that around. That is a really cool one. I love this tap handle. Yeah. Um, but it also actually, uh, this is trivia time, Ooh. Hobgoblin is maybe my favorite beer. Really? My, like, favorite favorite beer. Well, let's get into it. I'll, uh, I'll grill you on it. Okay, sounds good. Cool. We've got yes. Hobgoblin. Yes, sir. This is quite a different beer. They call it the Ruby Beer. I can, I can see that. Yeah, so um, Witchwood is the brewery, but they have a whole lineup of beers called Hobgoblin. Okay. So there's like a Hobgoblin, like Blonde, I think. Okay. Hobgoblin so Ruby. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, because as we mentioned, it's so hard to get these imported beers, I haven't had the whole lineup. Um, but this Ruby, I think, is what their original Hobgoblin was. Mm -hmm. And this beer is, is really the beer that made me fall in love with English beers. Interesting. Um, this is actually a British brown ale, so category 13B. Um, and yeah, it's called Ruby. It has Ruby highlights, but yeah. it definitely is like right there in that nice like brown category. Oh, yeah. um, and I just, I love this beer. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's take a sip and tell me about it. Yeah, let's, uh, maybe we can share our impressions. Of this I'm really beer. liking the nose on it. Yeah. Well, what are you getting from the nose? Is that kind of that estuary? It's almost like... Plum or some kind of fruit. Yeah. On the nose. Yep. You know, some I'm of the, eating a plum. But. Some of the darker plum can actually be from a, a dark caramel malt. Okay. I think that that whole flavor profile is rounded out because of the esters and the, that very characterful British yeast as yeah. well. So I think it's a combination yeah, of the very of the, estery. Yeah. Yep. It's like a like a mid to darker range caramel malts okay. and the yeast. Uh, which gives it that like dark fruit aroma. Mm. Yeah, like a fruit leather. Yes. You've ever, yeah, fruit yeah. leather if you've ever eaten fruit leather. Yep. A little bit of notes of like toffee, caramel, and biscuit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's an interesting flavor. Had a little bit of bitterness on the back. But it's not like hot, I mean, not like hot bitterness. Like with American beers, you can kind of picture like you know the hop styles you know dang right. you know grassy whatever. well this is again a, a not going to be a hop flavorful beer yeah. the bitterness is definitely caused by the hops yeah. but they're all going to be early additions just to provide balance to this very malty and like kind of otherwise rich beer yeah that's a really interesting one so where did you when did you first pick this up oh man i if you can even remember i've had this I remember visiting a Binnie's probably okay. 15 years ago, you know, so, you know, you're talking, you know, mid, you know, 2000s. Yeah. Um, and I just remember being struck by the label. This is before they canned it, but it, this artwork was still there. So you had the Hobgoblin label. It came in a really cool, like, bottle that wasn't shaped like other bottles. And that was back when I didn't really know that much about beer or, yeah. you know, beer styles or anything like that. So I was still kind of shopping around, looking at things based on their labels. Mm -hmm. And the the label and the name really struck me. I mean, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, with the taste for adventure right. and everything, you know, like, whoop. Yeah, I mean, you know, and we, we play D&D &D and oh, yeah. stuff. So I was like, oh, Hobgoblin, that's cool. Mm -hmm. ah, a little British beer, that's, that sounds really neat. Yeah, why not? So I tried it and I absolutely just fell in love oh, yeah. with this beer. Um, and I always seek it out. If I ever I see Hobgoblin on the shelf anywhere, I always pick yeah. it up. Oh. Um, and you know, that was, I knew it was good, Yeah. but now that I'm like a beer judge and, and more of an, uh, experienced, like evaluator of beers, I understand why it's good. Yeah. And, um, you know, it has that like really rich maltiness that blends with the esters so well, the bitterness to balance yeah. and just a really easy drinking, but really yeah. like nuanced, flavorful beer. Yeah, I'd definitely say an easy drinking beer for sure. Now, why why something like um, an ESB uh, for Port Griffin instead of Hopgoblin? It's ESB, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so my Port Griffin is is more of an ESB. And honestly, when I was, when I was developing the recipe, I actually thought Hopgoblin was an ESB. Oh. Yeah. Um, and, but I was thinking of uh, this, this, all the, my comments 
that um, applied to the ESV can also apply to this. Mm -hmm. You know, where it's it's not too strong, it's four and a half percent alcohol, yeah. it's not too dark or too light, it can no. go, you know, pretty much in any season. So I was looking at like these English types of beers when I was developing it. Thought that Hobgoblin was an ESV, turns out it's a brown ale. Um, okay. But brown ales and ESVs are very similar. Yeah. Um, I think that the brown ales definitely have more caramel and more of that like you know fruity note to them a little obviously a little darker yeah. um but they're really similar it's really interesting so it basically <laughs> it basically was hobgoblin inspired however really british misinterpreted beer, really british beer in, inspired and another thing that i i like to do when i brew is i like to try to brew things that i can't get commercially yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So, you know, I don't really brew hazy IPAs because, they're I, you know, yeah, I'll, you know, they're everywhere. everywhere. So, and, and honestly, the breweries can do them better than me um, in most cases. <laughs> um, I can't really find British imported beers, so I've been trying to brew quite a bit of them. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, think I think even Blue Moon has a hazy IPA now. Yeah, every every has a hazy IPA. <laughs> wow. So, but yeah, uh, if you ever get a chance to find a Hobgoblin or in any of its varieties, I can't recommend it enough. Yeah. I, I really do think that, you know, this is my desert island beer. Oh really? You know, if you're stuck on a desert island, what's the one beer that you could you could drink? Yeah. You could have. I think it would be. To have, give airdrops of a Hobgoblin. That's right. Uh, I think it would be Hobgoblin. That's really interesting. That's a good beer. That's definitely a good beer. You know, for me, it checks all the boxes. It it has malt flavor without being like overly like roasty or sweet. Yeah. It has hop bitterness without like scraping the hop residue off your tongue and being too intense, right? It has that like cool little yeast character to it, and uh, it tastes great by itself. It go really well with a meal Ooh, yeah. as well. So, well, it seems like it's probably one of the easier to find in. It sounds like they export it quite a bit. Yeah, it still is a little tricky to find. Okay. So uh, talk to your local place, yeah. talk to your distributor, and, uh, and try to get Hobgoblin. It used to be more prevalent than it is now. I see. I, okay. I think because of you know, all the things that we've talked about. Of course. Yeah. For sure. Well, it seems like we're winding down. we got one more. That is the Old Suffolk. Yes. Um, so Old Suffolk is an old ale, and I've not actually ever tried this beer before. Oh, neither so have I. So this will be a fresh new experience for both of us. Yes. All right. Blend of two classic ales, one aged in oak for two years. Look at how viscous this thing is. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Well, and I was going to say, I mean, it's got to be like an old style of beer because they are putting it in clear glass yeah well it's called an old ale oh yeah. that's a good point i hope it's not uh skunked or anything that's yeah um we're so, kind of already getting into discussion here yeah so yeah it's a very interesting uh here let, let me read the uh let me read the back okay uh this vintage ale is dark and intense almost ruby in color with an appetizing spicy fruitcake aroma this full-bodied ale combines flavors of oak caramel and burnt toffee that will march across the palate that's crazy it's that is very stained yeah. the glass stained the glass um there's like a big is that like a big bubble in there or no what's what is going on with this like yeah it's just crazy that's just a bubble it's just yes. crazy that is a weird oh there it goes yeah yeah this is a crazy beer already like, it's definitely got an interesting nose yeah almost like molasses like mm -hmm. like Darker yeah, than answers. darker than toffee and caramel, like burnt sugars, molasses. Mm. That's interesting. What is what is an old ale? <laughs> so what is the what did the BJCP say about that? An, so an old ale is is a, a darkish English beer mm -hmm. um, that is aged for a really long time. Um, so it it actually some flavors that are considered flaws in a lot of styles are okay in an old ale. So, I mean, we see that the carbonation is really low. Oh yeah. So old ales sometimes are actually served from the casks that they're aged in. You tap the tap the cask and it comes right out of the cask. 
so you get that like fresh oakiness, but also the carbonation is going to be extremely low, almost flat. But you know what? In this flavor profile, it kind of works. It does work. Like that's really interesting, and it's like one of those. Uh, it's like whenever you watch like a movie, you know, where they're like drinking a big flagons of ale. Yeah, you know, and it's like it's like super, um, you know, medieval times kind yeah. of theme or whatever. Like, yeah. So um, yeah, I mean that's maybe that's just what beer was back then. Yeah, I, I definitely to was to a certain extent. Yeah. So uh, yeah, old ales are usually like aged in casks uh, for quite a long time. So it gives time for all like all of these dark, rich flavors to mature and settle out. So you don't get an intense roastiness. You don't get an intense sweetness. And the only reason that this beer can be this like heavy and dark and rich without being so like, intense and sweet is just aging it out yeah that's why that's why you know beer collectors will you know buy a bunch of you know beers and age them out that's why a dark lord three years after you buy it is much better than when you get it fresh because yeah. it, it's so rich and intense it takes time for those flavors to like kind of mature and then like settle down a bit. and that's the whole idea with the uh english old crazy yeah i like it i do like it i like it a lot actually I, I really do, too. Um, Hobgoblin might be my favorite beer, but, yeah. th like, of the flight, I think I like this the this best. This is a really, it's a really interesting one. It's not like either of the other two at all. I mean, where the other two are kind of maybe similar, mm -hmm. this is very different. Yeah, I get a ton of molasses. Mm -hmm. There is still a little bit of balancing bitterness on the, on the back end. A there. little bit on the back end, yeah, but I mean, it's not... I mean, I think it's not taste hoppy. Though. No, like nothing like that. I'm not getting an ABV or anything on this, but uh, yeah, it says that one. It's a it's a blended beer, but one part of the blend was aged in oak for two years. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I can't remember where I got this beer, but I am really right. glad I picked it up. <laughs> <laughs> Old Suffolk ale. Old Suffolk. I and mean, then who knows how long it actually aged out in the bottle. I mean, considering that it yeah. stained the white glass, it's probably been in this bottle for quite a while. Well, too. and I'm really, I'm really surprised and glad I didn't skunk. Yeah, yeah, it's it's we, not skunk yeah, at all. I think we've talked about clear glasses before. Yeah, it's like aging a beer without the uh, guesswork. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You don't have to actually age the beer. You don't have to like practice self control. Yeah. I've got Dark Lord that, like you said, I mean, I've been aging that for a year already. Yeah as of this recording, and uh, I'm going to keep it for a few more years, you know? Thankfully, yeah. I haven't had any special occasions to break one out recently, but, yeah. you know, pretty good. Well, um, this next year here, in 2022, I want it to be the, the year of the English beer for my home brewery. Oh. I plan to brew every style of I English beer. I think I remember you telling me that. Um, it's really nice when I'm doing that, to be able to try some of you, you, yeah. you need to try the like an actual example before you try brewing it. Um, I don't think it can come close to this. Thing. I was going to say, have you been aging uh, beer in oak barrels for two years already? No, although you know, I would definitely consider getting a cask. I could get you can get a five gallon barrel. Mm -hmm. um, if I can get a cask with a tap on it, yeah. how cool would that be, be? Great to brew an old ale, mm -hmm. age it in this cask, and then just tap it when I want. So. Whenever you're ready. Might, might uh, be doing that in the yeah. future. Yeah, so give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, this is just a terrific beer. Yeah. Good beer. Mm-hmm. This would not be my Desert Island beer because it's just, it's too... You'd, yeah. It's intense. You'd it's have rich. To, you'd have maybe, you know, half. Yeah. I mean, I, I really enjoy this beer. Mm -hmm. um, but I... And honestly, if, if, if it was one, two, three in a flight for, you know, a judging, I would probably award this beer first place. Sure. Like, compared to the other two. Yeah, yeah. All three are excellent, and all three are actually BJCP commercial examples of style. I like that. Really. Um, I yeah, think this sense. is just, I mean, divine. It's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Um, my Desert Island beer is still Hobgoblin. Still Hobgoblin. Because it's just so drinkable. Oh, yeah. But uh, this is a yeah. fantastic beer. Yeah, and I mean, that's the other thing. I don't think I could drink a whole one of these by myself. It's a good thing we're sharing this, because this would be a very hard beer to drink the entire bottle. 
Yeah, this is a kind of a shareable, it's like very shareable. sippable type of beer. Yeah. Um, really good though. Well, hopefully, hopefully everybody at home could maybe find one of these. Yeah, I mean, do some digging. It's it's worth digging around to try to, to try to find this um, try to find this beer, Old Suffolk. Yeah, yeah, share it around. Well, I think that's it for uh, British beers for this episode. Yeah, I think it was it was really fun digging yeah, into like three talk. totally different styles, but really talking about what makes British beers British beers. Yeah, uh, and we can definitely have more British beers on uh, in the future. Maybe uh, maybe they'll start importing more now that we've talked about Could them on be. our show. Yeah. <laughs> they, you know, I mean, I, I, I hear we changed the industry, you know. Oh, yeah, completely. I mean, everything we tell, yeah. everything we say, you know. It's of course. Like, oh, yeah, those are the, uh, the two guys you want on your <laughs> on your side. So, but, yeah. no, I mean, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully, you know, we do st- see some uh, English beers coming out. Yeah, I will, I'm always on the lookout for English beers, and I will continue to be, so. Nice. And, uh I recommend to anybody that's watching this show, um, also keep an eye out for English beers as well. It, it is definitely something a little bit different and mm-hmm. uh, really kind of uh, an unappreciated beer, a um, ho- whole bunch of beer styles within a, uh, the mm-hmm. British uh, brewing region. Absolutely. So, yeah. All right. Well, with that, I think we're going to... Um, cheers. Cheers.